basically they're given inspiration from uh, the Creator Jehovah to uh, perceive, or they're actually given a vision through uh, what's called a sapisu when the, the angels descend, but they, they um, present like a, it's like a portal. It's a perception of light, and that is what they give them, a perception of, of, a, of a higher grade of light than where they are. And so the mortal understands that this is the way out of where they are, like their dilemma or whatever it is that they're having. The mortal can't just uh, step upward like in a Dahai, which is the the, 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 the Dahai is the, the, the stairwell. But what they what they do in, in, in the rise is is they they rise up like this, like they ramp up to it. So it isn't really a step. It is a step, but they can't uh, generally speaking can't approach it directly, or they can't step right up to it from from here to there. But they have to progress toward it. And and some people when they go forward, uh, many people they they. Uh, it's not a constant ascension, but rather it's it's a uh, up and down and up and down and up and down. But eventually they get to that step and they make that step. Once a person, once a person has mastered the step, uh, then they can turn around and, and help those who are in, the, in the, the step that they were just on below, and help them to come up to the next step and when they when they get practiced at that and, and they, they essentially the master of the light that step then they can step up and up, up to it back down from it up to it back down from it as necessary but until they've actually arrived there through this process through that sort of ramp ramping up to it um, through their changes of their behavior and, and their minds mindset and, and uh, their intentions and their sentiment and so forth um, and their resolution their resolve they're going you know, to to the guy uh, because if nothing else Jehovah will provide allow the environment he doesn't really provide in the sense that he doesn't actually Punish, and Jehovah never punishes, but he allows a person's fruits to come to them. And if, if they've been sowing things, or their forebears have been sowing things that haven't been uh, particularly wholesome, well, they, re they receive that result. They, they have to live with that, with that fruit. And so Jehovah might uh, have his uh, kingdom step back a step and up a step away from this person, or a nation, or whomever, a family, or whomever, a group, and allow them to perceive their true condition, to experience these things. And, um, And therefore, that's the the, 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 the the evil that's inherent there. If they if they have been sowing darkness, then they will reap darkness. And not necessarily it's not necessarily an eye for an eye or tooth for a tooth type thing, but it's the intention of what's being sown, and then that coming around the fruit of that, uh, the, how it worked out, in in the receptivity and how others have received that, and what they have done with that, with regard to the light of the. In other words, it's not the recipient's darkness that determines. If I find sowing something, it's it's the light in it that I'm sowing, and and how that affects the light, and how that helps this person over here, the recipient, what they're going to do with that light. Now, uh, if it if it misguides them or whatever, well then that that uh, that that. That error in my in my impart, imparting, well, then that that comes back to me. My intent, if I have a good intent, that intent comes back to me, 
and so I might get something back in, in a fruit that that's um, slightly off skewed or whatever because of that's what I had been sowing. So in that sense, it's an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, but not in the sense that um, I, I imparted a particular what I consider to be wisdom to to help someone else and and it was slightly off or it was right on the mark but regardless it was part of that as the intent and all that and as it comes around now if if I'm imparting and and I'm imparting with evil intent well that evil intent also comes back around and so uh, anger if someone uh, vents out in anger or holds hatred or the selfishness or is in a warrior type spirit uh, those are uh, attitude spirits that that result in darkness and that's what comes back to a person through a, a dark environment a dark milieu that they are in uh, spiritually as well as corporeally and ultimately everything works out outward to the corporeal realm and so anyway so to to help a person to uh, find their way forward up, up to that next level because that's that's a, often a big challenge uh, because in this day of Cosman, uh, we, we, we can't lead people. And we don't say, you know, uh, like in the past and during the time of Cephas, it said, you know, that old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make the horse drink. Well, that was a lesson to be learned back then. But now in Cosman, we can't even lead the horse to water. The most we can do is we point out the water to them and we point out the advantages you know, that, hey, you are thirsty, aren't you? <laughs> and there is some nice water. But you can't actually for Well, if you're going to stay in the light, you can't force them. Now, obviously, there are people who are going to try to force others and all that, but that's of the beast in this era, in this new age that we're in. And that's actually um, an imposition on that other person. And it, it comes back to the person who did the sowing. They, they will reap know the repercussions of that it's a great labor but it's a it's, a, um, it's also a great challenge I mean it's something that it's not easy to do to help others to unfold in the light to blossom in the light to find and to help them to move according to those ways that Jehovah has uh, laid out for a person and peoples to go forward in because in this day and age, we have to allow people their freedom to choose and to uh, not give advice unless you're asked for advice. You know, to not tell people what to do. Uh, because people need to feel accomplishment, you know, that, that they themselves have um, actually done something that was uh, of their own decision, that they can perceive that it was of their own decision, of their own perception and, and conclusion that they have come to, that, that they weren't forced into it. Because there's no honor at all in, in being forced. And it's, it's degrading to actually have to be uh, forced into something. And that just breeds resentment the resentment is from the recipient and uh, in some skewed way the, the sower may also feel resentment that he has to be sowing or she has to be sowing in this particular way but that's different I'm not we're not talking about that we're talking about uh, receiving uh, something that if somebody's forcing you to do something Inside you, you don't want that. No one does want that inside them. And so uh, that's a part of this, what we have in this new age here, this uh, seventh era of Cosman. This freedom that we have, because we have in our souls now, we have a comprehensive judgment. 
and um, and therefore we we have not only the capacity to perceive right from wrong, but we have the duty, so to speak, or the obligation, the opportunity, the responsibility of deciding, of making our own decision and deciding which way to go forth. Now even if somebody else makes a decision for you or for the group, you still have to decide in you whether you're going to go along with it or not. So it's always your decision, always. And the most anyone can do is help you to perceive, you know, the most anyway, they, they can turn on a hall light, so, so to speak, and you go and you look and you go, oh yeah, yeah, I see that, I didn't see that before, and somebody will click on another light over here, oh yes, yes, yes. And marvelously, and then everybody gets to see all these different uh, illuminations, all these different uh, points of view, all these different aspects and facets of a situation. It's to allow for the flow, the best way for the flow to come come forward. Well, one of those ways is is what they do is is that the uh, the subject comes up uh, and so they discuss it, and all these hallway lights are illuminated, so to speak. All these facets are are seen, all these different pathways and, and all that, and then um, they discuss it and they talk about it, and they they. They give forth their light, you know, how they perceive it. And then God, the son of Jehovah, or if it's a goddess, then daughter of Jehovah, um, then makes, uh, makes the final call. Because uh, the god or goddess is chosen in the first place because they're the one who has the highest light out of all. Of those folks. They're the one that's closest to Jehovah of all those folks. For in, in, in the arena for which they're laboring, for which that God was crowned. Um, so for example we have a God of this earth in her heavens uh, up in his throne in his uh, arena up there and, and, and a holy council and his crown is for his, his domain or dominion is, is for this region, for the earth and her heavens, for a season. And so this God was chosen because they were the highest in the grades and ranks and for the purposes of, of where the earth is at this time and where it's going toward. Well, we, if we're going to emulate the kingdom of Jehovah, and the kingdom of God is a part of the kingdom of Jehovah. Uh, then, uh, you know, we could we could do well to practice like and do things like like how they do it because that's the way they found the way to resurrection. They found a way to peace and joy and love and happiness and, and beauty and glory and all those fantastic things because they're living them. They're living that lifestyle. They're living in the light is what it is, because those things come in the light. Now what is darkness? Well darkness is nothing but the reflex of light. Okay, it's the, or we might say Satan, or self. It's, it's like the response to light. And, but, but it's not just a response to light, or the response to light. But it's a response to light that uh, stimulate self, that stimulates uh, that which is that which is for the individual's benefit at the expense of, of the larger group. And so you might ask, well where do you know where you draw the balance or where's the line drawn and all that. And it's actually not as difficult as it as it may seem 
and to those who are in, in darkness, looking out, everything looks like it's in darkness pretty much, you know, and then there's a little lights here and there and all that, but there's no, it's all, you know, gradations of gray and, and, and it's very difficult to, to, to see because one is living their life from a, a self-centered focus and looking outward and, and seeing what this means in relationship to the self here. Whereas a higher grade, which we ultimately attain to, is to, I mean, the, the self is, is the, the, the individual is still there, only there is a, a part of this person, which we might actually call his uh, a truer part. And the reason that we say it's, it would be a truer part it was, is because it's that which is going to continue on as we progress and rise in, in, and go up the, the stairs, the, up the high, up ascend onward and upward, that we ultimately rise up out of the darkness into the light and we keep continuing on and into this light as we draw ever, ever closer to the Creator, to the All-Person. Now the All-Person, yes, created darkness and yes, there is a good reason for darkness. All growth uh, comes in darkness and you have the womb, the mother's womb, and you also have the seed down in the soil of the earth. So there's a lot of um, representations of this, of, of how growth comes out of darkness. But that's not just, that's just the physical growth with that, uh, um, that we were uh, speaking of here in these representations, but there's also a, a spiritual growth, a, a spiritual, uh, we start off in spiritual darkness, and this is the self. And this is, a child starts out this way, because that's where the growth has to start from. It has to start from the core of a person, and down inside, who they are, and, and that person has to learn what, every, what everything is out there in relationship to that self. And, and a baby starts out not knowing about self, it just is about self. But. Uh, as a baby starts out, everything is one, because that's what the Creator is, all is one. But the baby learns that there's some things out there that are have their own way about them. They, 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 they don't respond to the child, per se. And so you'll have the image of the parent will come into the child's view and the child will feel all these feelings and, and have a visual of some effect and a, and a fragrance and a, a touch sensation and um, all these things are there when, when the parent is there. But then when the mother leaves the child's uh, out of distance from the child, the, the, for the, as far as the child concerned, you know, that's no longer, uh, he doesn't know what to make of it at first, but eventually he learns that this is a separate entity, that Mama is a separate entity, and Daddy is a separate entity, and all that, and, and ultimately learns that he himself or she herself is an entity, and that um, And then what does that mean and how does one grow in that? And so the child then perceives stuff, watches stuff, examines stuff, manipulates things out there in the environment to see how it affects, you know, to see what happens, but also how it affects that, that, that child, how it, affects that, how it affects me as a person. The child uh, wants to see what, oh, if this happens, you know, if I pinch and then it hurts and, and so forth, or if somebody pinches me, it hurts, or if, if somebody tickles me, I laugh. If somebody gives me a hug, I like it, you know, and so forth. So, but that's the self. That's the, the self. We all start there, and then we progress, we grow, and and we 
we learn from the self-centered world, we grow out and grow up and, and, and perceive that there are uh, things that are of concern that even don't even have anything to do with ourselves, directly anyway. And you know, we observe our neighbors and you know, we might meet them occasionally and all that, but there we really understand that they have a, a separate lives, a, a separate everything. So it's not really uh, self-perceived, but, but it's a start, you see, and your brothers and your sisters, they all have their own thing that they're doing, your older brothers and sisters. And, and eventually a child lifts up out of this, this self and and as a, and that's part of this whole progression that man goes through in order to uh, become that person of light which they will become but they, because when you're starting off you're starting off with self you're starting off in in total uh, stillness total uh, I want to say like a black field, a dark, just a totally, there's there's no evil. No, no, we have to understand that darkness is not evil. Darkness is not evil, but evil hides in darkness. So evil likes those who do evil and all that. They like darkness because they can hide in it. And so, um, and the thing, it's just less easier to see in darkness than in light. But a, a person in, starts in this darkness because we have to learn to understand darkness. sick person you know who's Ill, has an illness or whatever and, and they're put in a room and the lights are dim a bit you know for them because it's, it's too much stimulation for them so they need to have that soothing so that healing can take place and all that. So the darkness there's a lot of good that comes with darkness because the earth is soil that's dark and all that so it's so it's not the darkness per se but what is so what is evil then? Well, evil is when somebody does something that goes against the grain of what the inspiration of the Creator is. Now, the Creator, Jehovah, the All-Person, the Ever-Present, meaning always present, everywhere present, and the Great Spirit, the Person of the Universe, but not in the form and figure of a human as we are. We don't. We can't see the Creator's form and figure because the Creator has given Himself all the way, and because He's given Him, He keeps giving Himself all the way. So we get closer to Him, and 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 we find, well, all right, who here He is? Oh, there He is! And so we go over there, but He's already been there and given himself away and he's gone so we can't really attain to know exactly what he looks like except we know that he is not in a form as we are in a form in as much as he's in all forms everywhere and so we might think of the universe as being his form and everything in it as being his form or part of his form but he is he's still a person just like you have uh, thoughts and you have feelings and you have sensations and all those things together create a person, create you because you, and you're the whole of the summation of all those but you're greater than the summation you're greater than your thoughts, you're greater than your uh, sensations and, and your sentiments and your emotions you're, you're greater than all that um, you are an individual. You are a person, meaning a human being, and you're an individual human being. So we have 
we have we have that and we, we start off in, in this darkness and, and we move up into this light and this light this inspiration from the Creator. Now, because the Creator has given Himself all the way, now the Creator is all good, all beauty, all harmony, all truth, all magnificence, all glory, all powerful, all these marvelous, really wonderful things. That's what the Creator is. But now the Creator also, also provides for a, a, a a screen or a, a an end point where uh, that which is which comes out comes back this way and this out here this reflective thing there this this reactive thing this reactive thing we call Satan or or darkness if it's up if it if the response comes from self now, if, if, if we're in a situation and we respond in light, then that's responding how the Creator responds. It can be a very challenging concept to try and perceive as far as in its entirety. It, it may seem very complex and difficult, but that's because of the limitations of corporeal words. Because the spirit inside, the soul inside, can perceive truth. It can perceive light and it doesn't need all this word wordy explanation. And the words are just to help the soul to perceive the truth. And so, when something is, is put forward that is not truth, that's purposely a lie or that is intended to hurt or to harm, um, basically what we would call or have known as sin or, or doing evil. Uh, it's essentially in simple terms it's, it's L-I-V-E, live, backwards. It's going against living. It's, it's evil. L-I-V-E-E-V-I-L. -E and so um, that's a, about as simple as an explanation as a person can get. This inspiration that we get from the Creator to, to rise up, to, to move toward His light, um, it meets all these, the milieu well, of, 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 of what was created by evil. Because when, when evil is created, this, it doesn't go away, per se. It, 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 it gets imprinted. It gets impacted. It, it has an effect. And this effect can be felt and seen and so forth and all that. And, and it affects the mind and the spirit and the soul and all that. It, but, but mostly it affects that which is in the darkness. And it, and it has less effect on the light. The light can move beyond the influence of all this uh, disruption and disharmony and all that, which is and chaos, all of which is, is some of the regular attributes of, of self, of, of which all another name for self is Satan. Um, uh, not that Satan is, you know, an individual who is opposite the Creator, you know, and in strength and in power and all that. No, that's not the case, because Satan is, as we said, is merely the reflex. And, but it's the dark reflex, it's the reflex of self. And so, uh, as we move toward the light, the inspiration of the Creator, Liss wants to lift and, and helps everybody to, to find a way up, to rise up. And Satan's not sure, you know, he wants to, oh well, you know, and there's doubt and black doubt, they call it in the past, you know, the Seguan. Ooh, that was, what was the, one of the ancient words for this. And, and so um, a person has to encounter that and has to learn how to rise beyond that, beyond the darkness and all that. But the Creator always wins. The Creator, Jehovah, is wiser than Satan. Because you see, Satan is the reflex of that light. And that, so it's not the originator. And so the originator, who is the Creator, Jehovah, 
he's always one step ahead. He's always many steps ahead. He's already, you know, gone and 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 has he is even more comprehensive all the time. And so he can always outmaneuver Satan. Satan can never. There's no way that Satan can win against you know, Well, uh, uh, Satan can win temporarily against those who are. Uh, you and I, who are sparks of light from the Creator, uh, everyone, all humans have a spark of light within them that's given from the Creator, and that's and that's that's a piece of the Creator in us, and so we're not the Creator, but we have access to the Creator, and we can we can become one, commune with the Creator, and we can never be the Creator, but we can for short periods of time and for for a certain amount of, of time you know it's just like uh, it's like a sponge we can soak in um, you know water if you're you know if you put a sponge in a basin of water you soak up the water but it won't it'll never soak up all the water in the basin so and that's like the creator you can never you know all, all in the entirety but you, you can you can get his essence from the water. You can understand what water is. You can understand what who he is and all that stuff in that way. So, as we want to rise up toward the light, how do we do this? And one way to rise up toward the light, well, is, is through the faith of discipline, through uh, a vegan diet, and to put away war and enforce, you know, trying to enforce things, but to live a, pure, a, a life of peace. And that life of peace cannot come unless there's a vegan diet because the vegan diet uh, charges the blood with with uh, coolness with with light whereas uh, eating uh, animal substance causes the blood to become hot and and dark and, and thick and if you look at the uh, herbivorous animals how peaceful they are and calm they are comparatively uh, the, the stillness that attends them or that they live in compared to like the carnivores who are you know, stalking and always in movement and you know you, you can't trust a carnivore you know so because they're gonna get you or at least that's their intent if they could you know that uh, that's what the carnivores are if, they, if, if you give them an opportunity to eat you they'll probably if they're not you know if they're not stuffed they will then well but an herbivore won't do that. An herbivore will, you know, leave you alone in peace and all that stuff. So, uh, yes, of course, if if you corner it, you know, and prod it with a stick, you know, it'll butt you with your ant, his ant, his antlers, or kick you or something. And because every all the creatures have some type of defense where they're cornered and all that. But we're talking about in their natural, uh, normal state. Of, of existence and you can compare the two and so for man you see the, the man when he eats uh, animal substance all he can't uh, avoid contention he can't avoid he can't get out of that darkness that thickness that that animal that is it's stuck on the great stuck on earth here stuck in this darker thicker milieu he can't rise up he can't rise above and, and get to the higher realms of light until he puts that away. Yes, the angels can come, and they do, and they occasionally they inspire man to say, "Look, you know, this is how it could be if you follow the faith of discipline. If you become vegan, a vegan man of peace, and you put away, stop war, and you worship the Creator, Jehovah. Why worship the Creator? Because in our souls, our souls have a need to worship. It's built in." Okay, we have, uh, we want to admire, we want to, but worship, it goes well beyond admi admiration. Worship is acknowledging that this person is, is the whole, is the all, is, is God everything. Okay, and, and we have that in our souls, and so we worship the Creator, the all light, the all person of the universe, the all perfect, the all beautiful, the all glorious. The all wise, the all powerful, the all loving, the all harmony, the all symmetry, the all music, all the 
those things, the all justice, yes, all that, everything, all the good, the, the highest that you can conceive of. And, and, and as we, we rise up, we can conceive higher and greater things, and higher and greater things, and the Creator is all those higher and greater things. Just like that sponge in there, we get, to be, we get to be bigger sponges and we can absorb more of the water, but the basin is huge, just like an ocean. So we, you know, we, we still can't soak it all up, no matter how big we become. The... So in, the, in our progress, as we move from darkness into light, how we do that is, is, is not only through the faithless discipline, through this purifying and cleaning and purifying, but also we, at some point, we, we, we learn to help others, to help others to also step up. And this will help us to rise up into ascension so that eventually we can go up and down the high, we can come down and help people and we can rise up. That's uh, all that we have to say today for about that.